Let's continue. And then we'll stop. Mysterious spirits. And tongues. Different kinds of tongues. Now again, we have to go back and we have to look. There's a tongue in chapter 14. There's a tongue that the Bible talks about that it says that you do not speak to men. Or, yeah, you do not speak to men, but you speak to God in that tongue. That tongue is not for the edification of the body. That tongue is for you. As you pray in the Spirit, you edify yourself. You build yourself up as you pray in the Spirit. That tongue is a private tongue. That's for you and God. That communion between you. Praying in the Spirit will build you up. Pray in the Spirit. I exhort you. I exhort you. Pray in the Spirit. All the way over here tonight, I was praying in the Spirit. Trying to get in my, get my mind and get my, my will aligned up with His. By praying in the Spirit. But this, again, we got to go back and we have to look at the why the gifts. Why is God given the gifts? Why is the Holy Spirit given the gifts? He's reparting the gifts for the benefit of the body. For the general purpose. So these tongues is not for you privately. These tongues is for the church. You will know the difference. When you pray in the, in the Spirit, yeah, I, can, I, I, I pray in... Uh, I, I speak three languages. I speak English, where I have to think what I'm going to say, and sometimes I don't think very well, and I say things that I don't want to say. But I have to put the thoughts in order. I have to put my words connected to those thoughts. I speak in Spanish. And again, it, I have to think what I'm doing. I have to think of what sentence I'm going to pronounce. I have to try to get it grammatically correct. I have to do all this work within my mind to speak correctly so that you can understand. But my third language is my prayer language. And there, I can disconnect. I can totally disconnect from it because I don't have to use my logic. I don't have to figure out how it is grammatically. I don't have to figure out how to pronounce the word. I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is open up and allow the Holy Spirit to pray. I can speak English. Oh, you put up a lot of Spanish. Solamente en la cambio de la mente. Only in the change of the mind, but I have to change the mind. I can't speak Spanish, think in English. You understand? I cannot speak tongues, think in English. I cannot speak tongues, think in Spanish. When I speak tongues, I don't think about what I'm saying. I don't think about how to pronounce. I just flow with what the Holy Spirit is saying. Understand? Mm -hmm. I have to use my voice. I have to use my body. I have to use my vocal cords. I have to pronounce. To speak in tongues means you have to use your facilities. You have to use everything that you are. But you have to step out in that faith. You have to step out into it. And you have to make sounds with your mouth. But as you do that, God will give you the freedom. We'll get into that more later on. But here in this, this tongue, this is for the church. Now this is, this, is, this is a gift that is very not well understood very much. God wants to speak to His church. He could speak through prophecy, couldn't He? He could. He could do the same thing using a prophet or the, the gift of prophecy. But He chooses to use another gifting. More than one gifting. Because this gift has got to have another gift in operation. And it's never to be left alone. Two gifts has got to be in operation for this to, to, to be functionable as the Lord wants it to be functionable. One is the person who's speaking the tongues. 
Now this is an impression of the Holy Spirit, again, because it's supernatural. It comes from the outside. It comes from the third dimension. It comes to this dimension. It comes to me. An impression. In front of all the congregation. I have to get up and I have to pronounce, I have to speak this tongue for the congregation. But the Bible says that there has to be an interpreter. Somebody that has the gift at the moment to be able to interpret those tongues. Or listening or hearing in the impression of the Spirit, standing up along with that person and speaking and give clarity of what the person is saying. We're not talking about translator, where you have to translate word for word, but we're talking about getting the general thought across. You don't have to try to focus on what did that mean. God will give you that impression as the message. It's almost, it's almost like you are prophesying what this other person is saying in tongues. When those two gifts are in operation together, it becomes as strong as prophecy because God is speaking to the congregation through His gifts. You understand what I'm saying? If there is no interpreter, then you are to pray for the interpretation. You are to pray for the interpretation. And if there's no one there, then it's, the Bible says to zip the lip. It has to be interpreted. What, what good would it be to have somebody stand up in church and cry out in loud tongues and nobody interpret it? Who would be edified? Who would be edified in that? It has to be interpreted. There is where I was used once again. Somebody stood up and came out with his tongue. And all of a sudden, I placed myself in a position of God. I'm stepping into this. And he was faithful. He gave me the interpretation. One time. <laughs> Do I walk in that gift? No. I don't walk in any of these gifts. The gifts are not for your ownership. They're given to you when the Holy Spirit wants to do something in the congregation. Understand what I'm saying? You, when you receive a gift, you use it, and then you'll have to receive it again in the future if it's going to happen again. But it most likely will happen and you most likely will step out in it again because you have an experience. You have the, the position of being able to step out in faith and to receive that gift again because you have stepped in it before. It's easier the second time. It's easier the third time. You understand? That's why somebody starts to be known for their gift because God chooses them because they are willing to step out in that gift when he wants it to happen. He's all the time seeking people. He's wanting to know who is open to him to be able to express what's in his heart. What's the last one? Interpretation. Oh, the interpretation of tongues. That interpretation of tongues is only, only when it is given for the congregation. If I'm speaking in tongues for me, for me, to edify me, no one's going to understand that. No one is going to understand that tongue. There is no interpreter of that tongue. God is the only interpreter of that tongue. And I'm in communion with Him in that tongue. Him and I are in communication using that tongue. So the, the, the interpretation of the tongue comes at the moment. It's not predetermined. Well, today I'm going to go to church and give a tongue. It doesn't work that way. It's the same as prophecy. You don't predetermine, oh, today I'm going to get up and I'm going to prophesy in church. Well, oh yeah? What are you going to prophesy? You or God? 
Same thing. Somebody has to have the tongue given to them by the gift, and then they respond in faith, and then the interpretation has to happen. Okay. All right, we're going to stop there. <laughs> we'll continue next week. Now we, uh, what I'm doing is, you know, this is just a little bit of a touch on the on the gifts because when when we get into praying for you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, tongues, I want you to speak in tongues. Yes, I'd love for you to speak in tongues because that is the <coughs> entryway into edifying yourself. <coughs> but I want you to be able to step out, not just in tongues, but I want you to prophesy. I want you to be available to God to use you in miracles or in, in you know, whatever. Let's not just get our eyes set on speaking in tongues. Yes, it will happen, but there's so much more. You know, the, the book of Acts, many times when they spoke in tongues, they prophesied at the same time. And if you look at the infilling of the Holy Spirit, which we will, you will see that they prophesied and they spoke in tongues. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, Father, thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your giftings. Holy Spirit, thank you for your giftings. We know us for the body. We are the body. We should be ministering one to another. We should allow the gifts to have function in our congregations, in our homes. And Father, we come into agreement with you tonight. We know that we have to make ourselves available. So Lord, we make ourselves available. Use us to extend your kingdom. Use us to extend your will, not ours. We bless you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.